Hey guys, what's up? Hi, Sactatron here from One Half Gazette, here with the next video, and today we are talking about the Queen Charge to take out the Inferno Tower in Clash of Clans. It's the Suicide Queen Charge, just sending your Queen in for that Infer Inferno Tower, and right away we're going to start with the first replay. Um, today we're going to be drawing stuff out and showing replays, but I want to start it off fast by getting a replay out for you guys in one of my own attacks. Just a short clip from this attack in which I Queen Charged. You can see Giants go down the tank, the Queen behind these very typical compartments where there's two little compartments each containing two buildings alongside that inferno tower in the corner of the base very common design and if you do it right you can get your queen in there and take out the inferno tower but in this video we're going to be talking about the fundamentals of how to get that done uh, let's go ahead and talk about how this first queen charge was done Okay, so I am in the You Doodle app. I'm gonna be drawing out how exactly you do a queen charge, how that last queen charge was done, the fundamentals of any queen charge, the three steps you need to make sure you take into account. And it's basically for these Inferno Tower compartments that have the moat around them, then the two, uh, two building compartments guarding them. Very, very common, we see it all the time. Now we're gonna talk about how to take it out um, or how to get that Inferno Tower with your queen because you saw the replay, but let's take a look at the fundamentals behind it. Then we'll take a look at some more replays of different Inferno Towers. So that all being said, let me back up for a second. Why do you want to queen charge an Inferno Tower? What's the purpose? The point is, oftentimes at Town Hall 10, there's a Lava Hound in the Clan Castle. Your queen is not going to get you much value in the Kill Squad, and the Inferno Towers are very high value if you can get one taken out. And just with the investment of a few Giants and a few funneling troops and some wall breakers, your queen can step up, grab an Inferno Tower, as well as a few other defenses, which can give you a big leg up, especially because the queen doesn't have much use elsewhere in the attack and even if there is not a lava hound if there's maybe valks or a baby dragon as there is on this base it's still worth it a lot of the time because um, it's so valuable to get your queen in there get the inferno tower taken out people also ask can i use healers and make it into a queen walk oftentimes no um, four healers for example is a big investment of troop space and if you don't know where your queen's going to go after she takes out the Inferno Tower, it's too much uncertainty to invest the full four healer troop space um, without knowing what she's going to get. Um, typically, you're better off doing a suicide queen charge, letting her take out the Inferno, then die shortly after, then moving on with your attack, whether it's a kill squad, then hogs, or maybe a kill squad, then laloon, or miners, or whatever it is. Um, there's lots of different attacks you can use this for. Works for pretty much anything, because the Inferno Tower is always a high-profile defense you want to get taken out. So let's take a look at how on this base specifically the queen charge was done, talking about the three things you have to take into account. One is wall breakers, two is going to be tanking, and three is going to be pathing. Wall breakers, tanking, pathing. So what do those mean? First is wall breakers. You got to think which um, wall do I want to uh, break into? Typically you can do either one. Uh, this one is a little bit farther out of range of the Inferno Tower, a little bit safer because it extends just one tile farther um, towards the outside. This one is also viable. You can wall breaker in on this one as well. The Inferno Tower range extends kind of like that. Um, but even if the Inferno Tower can reach your wall breakers, as long as they have enough time to detonate, which they will on pretty much any base that looks like this, this with the uh, moat, then the two compartments, uh, they'll have plenty of time typically. As long as that happens and they detonate, you're going to be good even if the Inferno Tower reaches them for a split second before they blow up. So um, pretty much doesn't matter much in this base. The Expo is maybe a little bit more of a threat if you come into this compartment because it can cover it more. Um, but not a huge difference either way. In my attack, I decided to wall breaker in here. Now, the next thing you have to keep into account is tanking. Because your queen can't just do everything alone, especially with two point defense immediately right here. You have to have some giants to tank. Typically two to four giants, depending on the point defense. I chose four for my attack just because the queen has to fight through quite a bit of buildings before she even targets either of these point defense 
plus the Inferno Tower might start to get onto the Giants, which will take them down even quicker. So I chose to go ahead and use four Giants just to be safe um, because the Queen's ability should not be used until she steps up for that Inferno Tower. Um, you want to save it for that. Don't use it prematurely, especially with the Expos kind of guarding this area. So I chose to use four Giants. And then the last part is probably the most important, which is the pathing. How are you going to funnel your Queen into that Inferno Tower? And because I'm wall breakering in right here, you might think I dropped my queen back here, but that's not the best idea because you want her to get close to that wall before she enters. Um, if you drop her too far back, the Inferno Tower is so far away from that opening, she'll never be close enough to actually target that Inferno Tower. Um, it has to be the closest building to her. So um, I dropped her over here. The reasoning was pretty simple. Um, and you can, on any of these attacks, you can always think about the pathing. Building one, building two, building three. Which ones is she going to shoot down? How is she going to move? It's not that complicated. There's only like seven or eight buildings in play. Just think through her progression of which, which buildings she will target. So I drop down the giants, my queen. I funnel right here because what I want her to do is take out this stuff. Step up, take out the defenses. Uh, get those down as soon as possible to get the damage off her. Then I want her coming up north, the reason being she'll hug the wall. And that way, once um, I funnel up here, instead of being back here, if I dropped her initially back there, she'll be um, by this wall. She'll hug the wall because she started at the bottom, then came up, making her hugging the wall as she turns the corner. And the Inferno Tower and that Bomb Tower will naturally, naturally be the next target as she steps in right here. So you don't always want to drop your queen uh, right in front of where you're going to enter. You don't always want to drop her right here if I'm going to wall break her in right there as well. Sometimes if you can create the funnel, it's best to drop her here than let her walk up. That way she'll hug the wall and she'll be at that closest possible point to come in, enter this compartment, which is your ultimate goal, and target the Inferno Tower. So I hope that made sense. We'll take a look at the, um, well, we already saw the replay, um, but that was how it was done as you saw the queen stepped up. Now let's actually take a look at another type of plan on the same base that didn't work, and we'll talk about why it didn't work. Um, the next attack, we'll take a look at the replay as soon as I'm done um, telling you guys how it was planned. It was Templar Assassin. He wanted to wall breaker in on this compartment which is fine, it's his choice, um, not a big difference either way, both are doable. The wall breakers were also successful. Um, the tanking was okay as well. He used his king to tank. It was a, dra a dragon attack, so the king is not quite as important. He used his king to clear out all this trash building, which is very um, popular because if you don't have any other use for the king, he's good at clearing out trash to help your queen move in. So that was all good. The problem was this compartment. He did a good job dropping his queen up here. He created the funnel up here. So he didn't drop her directly in front of where he was coming in. He also wanted her to start hugging that wall before she entered in. There were mainly two problems. One is he wall breakered in too early and the king cleared out these two defenses before doubling back and going around. So that archer tower wasn't there to pull the queen down. You want defenses to pull her close to the wall where she's gonna enter. That archer tower wasn't there. But another even more deadly thing is this bomb tower being one tile in between the air defense, meaning for the queen to step up and target it, she has to come around and target it like that. And that is what drew her away because he dropped his queen right here. Um, instead of stepping up for the bomb tower and targeting it from right here, being able to shoot over the wall, because it's far back, she has to come up, then go around and target it. And from there, the next target is going to be the army camp, not to come into this little gap right here. So the main mistakes were dropping the wall breakers too early and making his king come in and clear out these buildings that would otherwise pull her down, and also not being weary of this important defense that's not able to be targeted from this critical point right here. She has to come out away from where he wall breakered in, which hurt the attack. So let's take a look at the replay, enough talk, and we'll see this in action. So here is Templar's attack, like I said, a dragon attack, so he's able to use that king. Goes ahead and drops the wizard up top. Regardless of the entry, you still have to funnel at least somewhere on both sides 
get that first layer of trash taken out. There's the king, but you'll see the wall breaker is way too early, not necessary. Um, the king would still have tanked those two defenses quite a while longer. If he dropped the wall breakers when the king got up to the gold storage, this would have been a different story because the archer tower, the cannon, would have, would have been there to bring the queen down south. Instead, they're not there anymore. As a result, the queen has nothing to pull her down. Plus, that bomb tower makes her go around the base closer to the army camp than the inferno tower. And as a result, she is walking, she's gone. Um, nice try to Templar, but not the correct uh, form there to get the job done. All right, one more example for you guys on a different base here. Um, slightly different configuration, only real difference is it doesn't have uh, one compartment that has the gap in it. Both just have the two buildings uh, smacked up against each other, so no, no one tile gap in either compartment. Makes it a little bit easier to funnel because the queen can still target either of these two defenses without having to come out and around, so she can step up, get closer to a possible point of entry, um, which makes it a little bit easier. So this one kind of demonstrates a bit of a weird concept but it shows that you can kind of force your way in. It just takes more funneling troops. I think it's a pretty good example. You'll see what I mean in a moment. But um, he chooses to wall breaker into this wall, which is fine. Once again, it's uh, able to be done with the Inferno Tower being located there. So he comes in on that wall, but he drops his queen right behind there. And that's dangerous because, like I said, um, the window for her to walk into um, that compartment and step up for the Inferno Tower becomes towards the beginning of the attack when she's located right there. And unless um, the funneling is very good, she's not going to be close enough. Um, there's nothing that's going to pull her up to hug the wall like there would be if she started here then came this direction. So not the way I would do it. I would probably start my queen here then try to get her to come this way and funnel on these two buildings. But that's not the way Richie does it, yet he still does a good job of getting the job done. So what he does is drops a baby dragon here to step up, get this um, dark elixir drill. He drops his queen back here with a few giants and a few wall breakers to open that up. A wizard right here. Um, and then the baby dragon steps up and takes out this archer tower. And that is what makes this key because the queen... Um, after she steps up, takes out these three buildings, she's standing right here, but with the archer tower down, her only options that are close are going to be these two buildings, or this building, or this building, but the closest one is straight ahead to the inferno tower, so a little bit close there um, in terms of getting her into the base, but it does work out, and had the baby dragon not stepped up for that archer tower uh, located right here, um, the queen would have targeted it and she probably would have just gone right up here then probably would have gone to the cannon and then from there just would have been gone around the outside of the base. So a little bit risky because the point of no return so to speak when she steps up and either is going to go in or not occurs when she's standing back right around here um, but luckily the funneling is good enough that it works. So I guess you can still drop her right behind the point of entry if the funneling is very good. My recommendation most of the time is to let her create her own funnel by stepping up for these buildings and let her come across hug the wall that way she's standing right here right on top of where the wall breakers opened up the wall um, if the funneling is somewhat decent over here she has nowhere to go but into the base but it works out um, just fine for Richie let's take a look at the replay so here is this last example by Black Ice, aka Richie. Um, this one actually was a La Lune attack, but regardless, you know, you can do it on pretty much any strategy. La Lune, Hogs, Miners, um, even a mass type bowler or like a witch something uh, works for anything. So here, here he goes, a baby dragon at the bottom, giant wall breakers, a little bit risky here because a spring trap goes up. Didn't quite get the test that successful, but the wall breakers kind of sidestep it and get the job done. So the wizard on the left creates the funnel for the queen on that side. And also, even more importantly, baby dragon, boom, gets that archer tower. So right as that queen takes out the last archer tower, the next closest building is going to be that inferno tower. Even though the funnel on the right isn't that great because the queen didn't start over there, even though she's a little bit farther back, she's not hugging the wall as much, still works out okay. I'm going to go ahead and pause this because I don't want to show uh, any any of the uh, Valor do Harris bases. We had a uh, war against them, went very well for us. One by one star, good war to uh, both clans, was a very fun one, came down to the wire. So 
That all being said, hope this video helped. Like I said, the three steps, identify where you're gonna wall breaker into the base, think about the tanking, how are you gonna drop a few giants, make sure your queen doesn't have to use the ability until she steps up for that Inferno Tower, and finally, the pathing, AKA the funneling, whichever you wanna call it, how are you gonna make sure your queen uh, steps up for the Inferno Tower, and typically drop her on the opposite compartment uh, as the one you're entering in and funnel her towards the other compartment towards where you're gonna wall break her into the base. Uh, last thing, I'm gonna go ahead and put this at the beginning of the video, like a little bit of a f uh, some words or something. I'm doing a Q&A video tomorrow and I want uh, to let you guys know that so you can ask some questions in the comments of this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that at the beginning of the video, but I'll remind you guys again now. Um, looking forward to answering your questions and doing a Q&A video that I haven't done in the longest time. So let me know what you want me to answer, clash or non-clash related. That will do it though. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this tutorial helped and let me know if it did in the comments as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectron out.